Hello, my name is Ian Collins. I'm Chief Product Officer at Volta Trucks. I'd like to welcome you to our build facility in Coventry, where we're producing 25 test prototypes for our design verification programme. Since the first rolling chassis prototype of the Volta Zero started testing, we've been collecting huge amounts of data and using that to feed into our design verification fleet. The design verification fleet will be used to test the vehicle in all its use conditions, all the way from sub-zero freezing temperatures in the Arctic Circle to high temperatures in equatorial regions. We'll be testing it to validate its safety, durability and reliability. So by the time we launch the vehicle, we, we have full confidence in its performance. Our test program will include our customers. So we're going to have them participate with our test engineers making sure that the duty cycles that we use in testing represent real-world conditions. As we test and develop the vehicle, we'll be preparing it for its next stage, which is the production validation build, which will happen in our production facility at Steyr in Austria. The PV phase includes the final proving and certification as we prepare the vehicle for the production line. Uh, and at the end of 2022, we'll be producing vehicles for delivery to customers. The vehicle is designed to be assembled on our, our production line in, in Austria. Uh, at this stage, we, we need to act, act fast, get, get the prototypes built as quickly as we can. Uh, and one of the ways we achieve that is rather than going straight to a, a, a flowing production line, we build in bays. So we're using all of the same materials and processes that we would in production, but we're building step by step, checking out all of the processes and making sure that they work correctly. Uh, and then feeding that into the, the design of the assembly line um, for, the, for the vehicle to be built in Austria. It gives us the flexibility to make changes where we need to, so we, we set it up quickly. We're not spending too much uh, time or money on, on facilities at this stage. Check out all of the processes, make sure they, uh, they build the vehicle to the right standards. Uh, and that way we have a chance to, to try all of those things in a very quick agile way so that by the time we get to the production line we're, we're much more certain. As you can see now we've got, uh, we've got seven build bays uh, all with vehicles at different stages of build uh, and we're producing them, finishing them off at the rate of about two a week right now. Our job was really to lay out the bays, understand what equipment we needed uh, and procure that equipment as fast as, as we could so we could get, get moving with the build. It took around about six, eight weeks between uh, starting that process and being ready to assemble the first vehicle, um, uh, which is much, much faster than you would achieve if you, if you went straight into a big production line with all of the heavy facilities that you need to do that. The vehicle is based on a conventional ladder frame construction, which gives us the backbone of the vehicle. And this is the very first stage in the process. Uh, you can see here the suspension components going together for the rear as well with the, the twin airbags and then moving forward to the front of the vehicle. The, the structural challenge here really is to get the low cab and to bring the structure down whilst keeping the rigidity. And that's really what those sections are doing for us. Next stage is to build up the rear of the chassis. So we've added the Meritor 14XE uh, powered axle and built up the rear suspension, added all the air lines for the air springs. Then we've started adding the high voltage cabling, as you can see in the orange here and this is the inverter which powers the motor and drives the truck along the road. Moving towards the front of the vehicle, we've added the steering box, which is a key part of the steering system. And then you can see how we built up the front frame here to, to really stiffen it up. And with the low cab, we really need to bring uh, the structure down, but we want to make sure it's protected in a low speed impact. So we've added these crash cans, which absorb energy in low speed and keep any damage to a very low cost replaceable item. So we've got to the stage of having the chassis fully assembled and the uh, rear suspension and axle in place. And we're now ready to prepare the battery modules for insertion into the chassis rails. This is the assembly ready to go, manufactured by Proterra, who are our selected supplier. And we chose them for their long experience of reliable battery systems uh, in commercial vehicles. Uh, and these are pre-existing modules, they're not being developed specifically for our use. Each of them can hold around about 75 kilowatt hours of energy, and we're fitting two different variants. So this is the, the larger pack variant with three modules. We also have uh, the standard range version with two modules. 
So one of the key features of this battery system is the package, which gives us the ability to mount it between the chassis rails, keeps the significant mass of the battery low down in the vehicle and central, which is very good for stability. And it also means it's protected from any side impacts. And that contributes to our objective to make it the safest commercial vehicle on the road. The life and the durability of the battery is, is critical to keep it at a very controlled temperature. So we've worked very hard on a very efficient and well-controlled thermal system. You can see here the chiller system, the water cooling system, and also some of the air tanks and compressors going in here which support the pneumatic systems on the vehicle as well. So one of the ways we achieve a lower stress and fatigue in a driver uh, is to improve the ride of the vehicle. We've used an independent front suspension, which is quite rare in a truck, more typical in a luxury passenger vehicle. And this is, again, is from a well-known manufacturer, so it's a very mature product. We have a lot of confidence in its durability. This is the assembly of the roof of the cab. Uh, you can see the air conditioning unit going in here. We've got a very large cab, lots of glass around it, so we need plenty of cooling power and lots of air flowing around to keep the driver comfortable. So it's a very high capacity unit. That means package wise, the easiest location for us was, was up in the roof. Uh, and you can see the distribution pipes here to take the air to the different parts of the cabin. So one of the key features of the vehicle uh, is the all round visibility, 220 degrees from the driver's eye point. Uh, and here we're adding the glass, uh, which gives the, the vehicle that distinctive look and provides that all round vision. Once the cab's been glazed, we're ready to lower it onto the chassis and it has its own suspension mounting system uh, for additional comfort and, and isolation in the cab. Uh, and then we'll lower the roof section down on with the heating and air conditioning unit uh, and finally the roof cover section uh, which completes the exterior build of the cab. Before we trim the vehicle, we need to install all of the electrical systems. At the back here, you can see the control center of the vehicle where all the modules are located. All of that needs to be connected together with the wiring systems on the vehicle, and that prepares it then to power up and test, which is the next big stage. So once we have the electrical systems up and running, we're ready to install the interior trim into the cab, the seating, the steering wheel, and so forth. And we're also adding the door, which then we need to adjust so that it operates correctly. So at this stage, we're ready to install the dashboard into the vehicle. That also carries the instrument panel and the touchscreen displays as well. The next stage is to commission the high voltage systems on the vehicle. So uh, preparing the vehicle, closing the contactors and checking that the, the drive systems and high voltage systems work correctly. We're then ready to assemble the load box onto the vehicle, um, which is a, a, an operation that we, we do using a crane. Uh, and once the load box is there, we can add the surrounding panels and, and complete the assembly.